Some World War II related myths are propaganda while others are misconceptions. Either way, it's hard to know what to believe, especially when you didn't see the events in question with your own eyes. Even then, the brain likes to play tricks on us, and it sure likes to forget. In one of our recent videos, we covered six myths about the German army, and while they were scandalous, the Germans weren't the only ones whose history has been warped and misconceived. The French army is the focal point of many myths, but let's see how many of the following eight come as a surprise to you. One, at least, came as a pretty big surprise to us, as you'll soon learn. This first one is for the real casual historians out there, but the Germans did not, in fact, invade France first. The French invaded Germany first on the 7th to the 16th of September 1939, in what was called the Saar Offensive. At this point, the Germans were mutilating Poland, and the French army mobilized some 40 divisions, and with some of those divisions, entered Saarland. Here, they took many German settlements, facing weak resistance, but shots were still fired and men still died. All in all, the French army took some 2,000 casualties while the Germans took about 650. Of course, no large-scale battle between the French and Germans took place in Germany at this time, and this was because the French were ordered to jog back to the Maginot Line after Poland was unmade. On the Maginot Line itself, we would be perpetuating a myth if we said this bank-destroying fortification was a complete and utter failure. In fact, the Maginot Line achieved much of what it was intended to achieve, to prevent a frontal assault on the heart of France and to buy time for the French army to mobilize while the Germans steamrolled through the Netherlands and Belgium. It was never meant to make the French army invincible, nor France impregnable. The Germans only succeeded in penetrating the Maginot Line directly after they had outflanked it and pushed the Allies into the English Channel. This was in the German offensive, codenamed Operation Tiger. Before Operation Tiger, the French army had quite successfully defended the thicker, more burly portion of the Maginot Line. In some battles, the French sustained but a few casualties for German losses in the hundreds, and overall, the fortifications of the Maginot Line took immense punishment from German artillery without completely caving in. This leads us to, and sort of spoils, the next myth of this video. The French, as we've just stated, didn't always lose to the Germans. While they did defeat the Germans in small battles under the Battle of France, their fight did not end when the Germans took Paris. The French fought in other battles in the war, claiming victory over Germany and its allies both in and outside Europe. In Libya, for instance, units of the Free French Forces, bolstered by the British Empire, defeated the Germans and Italians in what came to be known as the Battle of Bir Hakim. Here, the 1st Free French Brigade fought off an Axis force some 10 times the strength of their own from the 26th of May to the 11th of June 1942. On the battle, German General Meyer Friedrich von Melenthin later wrote, in the whole course of the desert war, we never encountered a more heroic and well-sustained defense. While its necessity was questionable, the invasion of the Italian island of Elba was spearheaded by free French units and supported by the US and UK, and largely won by the French. In this operation, codenamed Brassard, the French sustained just under 900 casualties while inflicting 2,500 casualties on the Germans. The French also defeated the Germans while fighting for French soil in Colmar Alsace early in 1945. Fighting for what became the Colmar Pocket, the French First Army, bolstered by US troops, wiped the Germans out, inflicting up to 38,500 casualties for a payment of 13,400 French and 8,000 American casualties. The Germans who did survive the battle left behind 55 armored vehicles and 66 artillery pieces, and this Allied victory was vital to their push through Western Europe. We've already sort of busted this next myth by means of the previous two, but it's by far one of the largest, so we'll extrapolate it anyway. 
The French were not cheese-eating surrender monkeys. Focusing just on the Battle of France for now, as we've discussed in our video on French strength in World War II, the French army did not simply bend over for the Germans. As French historian Dominique Lamire put it, it was genuine combat and French casualty figures certainly reinforced this. Up to 85,000 French soldiers were killed in the battle, while a further 160,000 were wounded. Even when the Machinot line was outflanked and collapsed upon, many French soldiers, while outnumbered, went on fighting right up until their nation surrendered. It would simply be disrespectful of us to disregard the sacrifices of individual French soldiers in a defeat which ultimately came down to unbefitting military doctrine and leadership. As German General Heinz Guderian put it, despite the major tactical errors of the Allied command, the soldiers put up an obstinate resistance with a spirit of sacrifice worthy of the French troops of 1916. While we certainly advocate for recognizing French sacrifice in World War II, we must admit we bought into this next myth a little too keenly. In our aforementioned video on the true strength of France, we played up the French resistance a little too much when, in reality, the contributions of the French resistance to the Allied victory weren't so great. In fact, many French supported the Nazis, some going as far as to fight alongside them and contribute to the Holocaust, and many did nothing at all to contest the Nazi occupation of their country. It's estimated that around 90% of France supported the Nazi puppeteered Vichy regime, or did nothing to indicate that they didn't. If the Germans had won the war, this myth would not have been spun or would have been spun the other way. There's even a term which encompasses the proliferation of this myth in the carefully sculpted collective memory of the French people. Résistentialism, coined by French historian Henri Rousse. In the words of British historian Ian Osby, the French, understandably, reacted to their ordeal by retreating into a myth. A myth of people united in hostility to the Nazi occupiers, of a nation of resistance. As we implied in the previous myth, the French, as some might initially conceive, did not only fight the Germans and their collaborators. Indeed, they fought the Allies on multiple fronts, mostly under German flags. Fielded by the Vichy government, the French unit Légion Imperial fought with the support of the Nazis in North Africa against the Western Allies. There was also the Legion of French Volunteers Against Bolshevism, or LVF, which voluntarily fought abreast the German army in its invasion of the USSR. This unit later worked directly with the Waffen SS and after sustaining heavy casualties, was later remade as the 33rd Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS Charlemagne. Lastly, Vichy French forces also fought against the Thai in the Franco-Thai War. Another perpetuating myth is that the French were numerically drained after the First World War. In reality, the French had been bolstering their armed forces after the Great War and building fortifications, namely the Maginot Line. In the Battle of France, the French army attributed the majority of the 3.45 million Allied troops fielded to contest the Germans. This figure accounted for three entire army groups, comprised each of entire armies and also the French Army of the Alps. The Germans and their Italian allies did indeed bring some 3.65 million men to the scrap, yes, but they by no means drastically outnumbered their French opponents. Again, the French lost this fight due to unbefitting military doctrine and leadership, and an inability to react to the lightning war the Germans brought down upon the table. To help put things in perspective, more than 1.75 million Allied troops were captured in the fall of France, so yes, after this event, it could be said that the French army lacked manpower. The last myth we'll be covering in this video is the myth that the French were, well, French. Just how it was with the British, the French colonies did much of the fighting in World War II, not only France itself. France's colonial empire was quite large, second only to the British Empire at this point in history. At the start of the war, their empire included some 150 million people, compared to the British Empire which boasted 330 million inhabitants in the British India alone. Still, 150 million is no laughing matter and many French colonial troops spilt their blood for French interests, willingly or otherwise, in the Second World War. Fighting for the Free French were many men from Africa and the Middle East, but also French Polynesia, New Caledonia, and some other French colonies. 
Some free French units were made up of as little as 35% European soldiers. Other French colonies, such as French Indochina and some other colonies in the West Indies, sided with the Vichy government for at least a portion of the war. Though, French colonial troops were giving their lives even before France fell to the Germans and its rightful government went into exile. In the lead up to the Battle of France, the French employed almost 180,000 Senegalese tireurs, light infantrymen from Senegal, Africa, and some 40,000 of these men fortified the Maginot Line against the Germans. Many of these tireurs were killed and the ones who were caught weren't treated all that kindly by their captors. So how many of these eight myths, or perhaps in some cases misconceptions, were you aware of before this video? Can you think of any other myths relating to the French army or the French in World War II that we haven't covered yet? Please let us know in the comments section below. And just before you go guys, make sure you check out all those links in the description below. Check out our Patreon if you want access to an exclusive video that you won't find on this channel once a month. Our official merch partner where you can find some sick designs and our music channel where you can listen to the songs we played in this video unobstructed. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.